let's start again. So let's say things happened. You did actually download the plugin. Okay, I need to show you where to download it. There's a secret website, <laughs> monkeywebsoftware.de, may work. So you can click on FileMaker, and then there is a download here. You can download the Mac disk image and the Windows disk uh, zip archive. Both archives contain the same content, the plugin for both. It's just a packaging uh, thing. So on the website, you can also read my blog. Okay, now it loaded. So uh, I do have a blog where I um, write uh, about news on the plugins. I wrote articles about things that happen, tips, tricks, like FileMaker Cloud with MS plugin, or here example for PDFA, or JPEG quality, image zooming, New magazine, conferences, no? a calendar example. So you can stay uh, up to date with what's happening in, the, in my plugin world. Like here, dialog box with more than three buttons. <laughs> or here, a custom function to query values from a different table. So you can just copy this uh, and try the custom function here. Then on the website, go on the documentation page okay if you don't have internet you can of course view the documentation offline this file you can see all the <coughs> topics you can see here which functions are for Mac or only for Mac for Windows for Linux cross-platform for Mac and Windows or work on a server, on the client. You can uh, see what's new in version 7 or what's coming here uh, for 7.1. You can even see the statistics page, which tells you exactly how many functions we have. And uh, we have the page with the guides, where you can uh, see articles I wrote over time about certain topics. Those articles are also present as PDF files here in the, in the download. So you can read them on your iPad or whatever. Especially you can find them if you, if you search on your webs or on your, on your system for them. There's an installation guide which tells you where to put the plugin files for Mac, Windows, Linux uh, and server. Then we have the plugin files here. We have um, a plugin file for the cloud. We have a Mac plugin, which comes with both 32 bit and 64 bit. But you can use those Apple scripts here to create a 64 bit only plugin if you want. It's uh, usually a bit smaller. Well, I have one question uh, about that. Why does it show up uh, as a folder? Uh, well, file manager, file manager. FileMaker registers a file type, a bundle file type, because the plugin is a folder, yeah, it's but cool. it's a package. So it's tell FileMaker is telling the finder to show it as a package, as a file, with, with a certain icon. But sometimes the finder um, forgets. No, so agree. it doesn't matter if you see it as a folder or not, uh, just drag it to your for installation. So for Windows, we have a 32-bit and a 64-bit plugin file. You can uh, simply drop both into your FileMaker, and FileMaker will pick the right one. 
or you just install the right one. So I also made here a installation decision graph, which tells people for which FileMaker version on which platform to use which plugin file. Yeah, this avoids get people calling me at night and asking which file to install. Also, I made a, a graph for, for the licensing and for the purchase, uh, who should buy it. And we have release notes where I write what's, uh, what's changed in the plugins over the time. You can read a lot of changes. Then we have a few utilities here. Like we have a tool to shrink your runtime on Mac. Because FileMaker used to build runtimes with a lot of extra files included which are not needed. Then we have here a documentation on how to co probably sign a runtime. We have the form utility which helps you to figure out so form utility uh, to figure out the field names of fields on a website. Like let's load here if it, if it works. Let's load Google. So and I have here a form field where I can put some text and if I go here I see all the form fields on the page and here in the query I see actually my text so this is the field I'm looking for and here the plugin suggests a um, command to use to fill this form field with a value. You also see available links, images, and the original HTML here. It's just a convenience utility I include with the plugin. And I also include a FileMaker clipboard helper, which is just a little convenience tool to do things in FileMaker. Let's, let's show an example. Oh, my FileMaker is in German. I hope you don't mind. Uh, let's say we uh, take a, a contact database, we go here, I copy script lines and say here script to text, then I go to a, a text editor and let's say here I replace here uh, some calculation text, copy back, say here text to script, paste, and now I have the changed text here. FileMaker also translated it from my typing in English to German. <laughs> or for you it would be Dutch. Right. So, which, which application was this? You say? This is a little clipboard helper. clipboard helper. You can do this yourself in FileMaker because in the plugin I do have uh, the commands here, clipboard, and there is a function here to set, for example, the FileMaker data, and it works with scripts, script steps, layouts, custom functions, tables, fields, and you can always get the XML, store it somewhere, edit it, do search and replace on it, and then paste back. What can you do with layout? Uh, can you change, for instance? Oh, well, you can uh, copy a button. Put it on your snippet library, and later, if you need the same button again, paste it. Of course, if the button or anything, if there are references to other things which don't exist, you get those little uh, missing field errors. But it's it's a nice thing, yeah. There's also possibilities to do something with the style of an object. Yeah. Does it show the style of an object? Good question. Let's try. So, we have plenty of time, so, so let's see, um, the style here of a title, what, should I change the style a bit, uh, let's say we uh, give it a different text color, now here, make it red, so, uh, I copy it, and now to just check it, I use the clipboard viewer application, which uh, can show me the XML on the clipboard live. So this is uh, there's a lot of CSS here. 
it's escaped a bit, uh, but yeah. So it would include the CSS with the style. I recently made a little app um, on a blog article, which um, where you copy something in FileMaker field, and then my little app will add conditional uh, formatting rules, I think 4,000 rules, to define the color of the, of the field based on a different field. So if I type a color in, a, in one field, I get... Uh, oh, where's the example? Let's see. I would expect I have this example here somewhere. Where could it be? Field. Color. Where is the example? in here. Field. Um, no. Oh, here. So here is a database. So I can type here in this field a color, hex noted, and the field will get whatever color uh, within a certain limits. And the key thing here is. Uh, Why make us busy? <coughs> oh, waiting time. Oh, okay. So I can show you all the conditional formatting, and here the plugin generated all those four thousand roots. You normally don't write that by hand, <laughs> but it allows you to have fields with a color based on a different field. So you can show your field conditionally, red, blue, whatever. Um, there's a little soldier app here to, to, yeah, to do this. It's not code signed. Well, And here is a, a new database I got from uh, one of my users, which is a Clippet database. So we could uh, now go here uh, and copy some things, like let's say this is an important script I, I need all the time. So I copy it here, and I can uh, store it in FileMaker, give it a name, and store it. And if I later need it again, or similar for, for here, a button, let's see, this is a wonderful container, I need that all the time. I can store it here, give it a name, and have it in the database. And when I later come back on my uh, script steps here, I can snip it to clipboard and can paste it again. So this is a very useful thing, snippet database. And of course, here I can do search and replace, like uh, replace uh, the name of a variable or a field, whatever. So you could do the same with layouts. It would be nice. Yeah, you can do with layouts. So it's no problem. So next, uh, I had recently um, a training in Switzerland, and they just asked me spontaneously uh, to build something with a calendar. So I made this little example here. 
This is a, a HTML and JavaScript based calendar control running in a web viewer. Uh, it's it's um, you can download it on a website. It's for free. So happy. So let's just add an event. Uh, yes. Oh, there's this. Yeah. So uh, we can move it around. Uh, we can um, delete it, and we can uh, have triggers to to call back to to FileMaker if something happens. So we are noticed about events. And this is all made using the plugin and, and the right JavaScript. Like to initialize, uh, I use a few plugin functions to find uh, the HTML file. I load it into the web viewer. And then to add an event, I prepare the parameters and then prepare a line of JavaScript, which is, of course, specific to this calendar. But then I use my plugin function to run JavaScript and execute this JavaScript line to add the event. And in the in the JavaScript file here, in the calendar. Here in the JavaScript, I I define my uh, events in JavaScript uh, to to call uh, scripts in FileMaker with the FMP URL. So you can have a calendar view. Nice. Yeah, just be local, or? local. This this here. Yeah. You can load it from the website if you want. Okay. Usually, for um, uh, if you have your database hosted on a server, I usually put those HTML files also on the server. So I don't need to have them local. Mm -hmm. But of course, you can also have your database uh, wipe out those HTML files from, from text fields mm -hmm. on demand. Okay. So your choice. But you can do a lot of things in the web viewer. Uh, yeah, and the plugin can do a lot for you. Like if you have a, a form where you can select a file, you can in FileMaker only select one file. Now your plugin can patch it, and you can select several files. <coughs> and here we have a directory. Oh, that's uh, for Windows. You can use the Google Maps API to figure out the geolocation of your customers, like I do, so I can put them on a map. Or make calculation, like, uh, I have a meeting in Utrecht, please give me all people 100 kilometers around, so I can email you. And this is using curl functions, so let's take a look. The first thing is, for this example, you need an API key for Google. It's free to get. And uh, you just enter it into the field, and then it's OK. And if you do too many queries per month, I think something like 10, 20,000, uh, Google will call you to talk about uh, paying. <laughs> but for just a few calls per month, they don't care. And usually, for my customer database at least, I don't get 10,000 new customers a day. So. Uh, I'm sorry to not have to pay. Uh, okay, so we encode uh, the postal address into the the URL. We perform a, a curl request, and then we query the result and use some JSON functions from the plugin to figure out the um, latitude and longitude from the fields in the JSON. And this is very typical for, for doing web services with a plugin, because usually you just create a curl session, you set a couple of options, like the URL, username, password, maybe some uh, request type, so maybe for a post request you, you pass some, some text to upload, and then you call the perform, or perform async, or perform in background. To, to run it, and later you ask for, for the debug log, which is always very useful to figure out uh, why something didn't work. So, like, with insert from URL, you just get an error number. 
And here you get a textual description of all the talks uh, to the server and what the server actually sent as error message. And of course you can get the result. Uh, in this case we request the result uh, as text. You can also query the result as a container to put it in the container right away or you can have the result being written to a file if you if you're downloading. And we request it as being UTF-8 text. Of course the plugin doesn't know what we transferred. We just tell the plugin to use UTF-8. And we query the response code uh, because with the web service we have three, uh, three layers. The first thing is curl. Curl will tell us whether the transfer worked. Here we would get an error like uh, error 7 if the domain is not found. Then the connection may work and we may get from the Apache web server a response code telling us whether the HTTP request worked, usually number 200. If that's going right, we still may need to check with our web service if it returns an error code in, in the in the actually uh, JSON or, or XML. So your web ser service call may fail by connection problems, by HTTP protocol or by the web service. So you have to check them all and in this case I just check if I get an OK back and, uh, from, the, from the Google web service. And then it worked and else it doesn't work. <laughs> and if it doesn't work usually uh, the programmer needs to take a look. Because my users usually don't read the logs. <laughs> and here's the log. Um, let's put it in a bigger So on the log we see uh, it's trying a certain IP number so it may get several IPs from the DNS system and try several IPs so you would see connected at some time over a port. It's offering here various um, SSL options and then here you see the discussion about the SSL encryption and then they made a decision <coughs> and a decision on the protocol and you see the certificate details that we are really talking to Google and um, if we provide the plugin with the SSL certificates to check the plugin can actually verify that it's Google and not some intelli intelligence agency. Um, yeah, well, um, this is important because um, I once uh, went to a hotel and sent from the hotel emails and then got back an email from the hotel server telling me I'm sending too many emails. Hmm. And then I just uh, asked myself, why does a hotel know what I'm doing? And they used a transparent proxy for all the email sending and my little utility to send emails didn't check if, if the certificate matched. So I added the check and now I get an error if, if the hotel is trying to intercept the emails. Nice. Yeah, something. Uh, if you do encryption, please verify that your encryption actually fails correctly if the certificate is not matching and actually take a look with a tool like TCP dump if the data transfer is actually encrypted. Not just saying it's encrypting but actually doing it because a lot of software used to have fallback modes like if encryption isn't working well we switch back to plain text and still do the transfer the user will be happy but <laughs> everyone can read it. So here we see the, the uh, the request sent and we see the answer from the server and here we see well it was okay and we see it's it's transferring JSON with UTF-8 and uh, and then we see here the connection is left intact because curl can send several requests over the same connection which saves us time because all this SSL stuff is only done once. So what else? Um, by the way, do you have any questions, things you like to see? Because I have a lot of examples to show. This is all on the... This is all stuff you get when you download it. Okay. 
So, someone asked it about images, and I'm sorry, all the image stuff was missing in the slides. But I do have a sample here, which I usually show. So let's make a couple of copies of those pictures. And now we figure out how big the picture is. And we can rotate the picture. And we can blur it, and we can get it a coal effect. And now it's broken. So next picture, embers effect. We can flip the picture up and down or sideways. We can make it a grayscale. We can enhance it, equalize the colors. We can really compress it, good or bad. We can add a, a little solarize effect. We can scale the picture till you don't see it anymore. Or crop parts of it. So they are really done on the, their, their file is changed. Yeah, the file has changed, of course. So we can uh, we can add uh, we can raise it, add a 3D effect. We can sharpen the picture. We can add a frame, or we can shave away the frame. We can extract a, a color channel. We can implode the picture. We can negate the picture and back. We can uh, make it black and white with a threshold, and we can uh, swell it. So, what was this file called? Where you have all the examples? This is a graphics magic sample file. We can also trim pictures and remove any colors around, like this example, which removes all the pink areas by using the trim command and uh, the color replacement command. We can split multi-tiff files. We can rotate pictures with orientations. And here you actually see um, FileMaker showing a picture, and FileMaker showing the rotated picture, and FileMaker showing the rotated picture in an interactive container. And as the interactive container is actually a web viewer, Safari will show it rotated. FileMaker itself doesn't care for the rotation. We can reduce image size. So we had uh, once the job to get signatures uh, under a certain file size to include them in, in a web service query. So we tried all the possible uh, compression uh, settings in, in graphics magic, like we create a PNG with color, with grayscale, with black and white, a JPEG with grayscale, a JPEG with black and white. We can uh, reduce the JPEG quality till we go under the threshold. So you can compress pictures with a lot of settings. Do you have a solution where you can uh, sign on an Android? Well, the plugin doesn't run on an Android phone, no. so I can't help you there. Of course, there are solutions for FileMaker to take signatures on a web viewer, on a web direct solution, I think. As far as I've looked, nothing available. Okay, so maybe an opportunity, opportunity for someone here, yeah? So you can also scale pictures, and you can provide the scale uh, command a size, which can be in percent or in absolute values. And not usually we just uh, provide uh, the outer rect angel, and the picture will be scaled down to match proportions in within this rect angel. Like here, 200 to 200, and we get a picture. We can also say um, to scale to, to exactly the size you gave, but then it's not proportional. We can crop images, of course. We can do some drawings. So you can draw a path. You can draw a circle. Three angels, lines. Oh, This example has a bug. And you see here a nice feature. The plugin can show you notifications for your bugs. Let's see, I put it aside. Uh, let's say I put it there. So we can read IPC text. Oh, yeah. Ah, 
there's a picture. Let's see. Copy the picture. Copy here. Uh, nothing. Uh. <laughs> Yeah. Also uh, no, no, no. This is for Mac. Um, for Windows, I have to find uh, an API uh, to do that, and I've not yet found one which works in FileMaker. So, okay. But if uh, if you need EXIF data from a picture, you can at least see which uh, which iPhone was used to to make the picture. We can also find pixels like this example, where we ask. Uh, the plugin, can you give me the first coordinate of a non-white pixel in, in a certain row? And I invented this uh, for a customer, which scans invoices. And on the invoice is a barcode, and he needs to know where the barcode is. So we looked for, for non-white pixels to find the place where the barcode is starting. We can export images in various uh, formats. We can create GIF images, we can uh, combine pictures. So, with various uh, algorithms, you can uh, put one picture on another picture. And we can annotate pictures with, uh, with text, so I can write a text on, a, on the picture. Text be formatted. Uh, in this case, I think not, but you can choose various fonts. So you can take a bold font or italic font, at least. So, now I'm up to questions. You talked about the plugin to your contacts uh, application on macOS, your address book. Um, yeah. Does it also support uploading a graphic to, yeah. for instance, a picture? To the you can add pictures for your people, yeah, okay. and query the picture, yeah. yeah. For the, the, Caldav, the, the calendars, so you also um, address it to an e email address to, to invite someone? Uh, the functions are limited uh, to what the framework allows me to do, but let's see. It's good to have a local copy. So let's see, uh, you would probably start with the events framework here and then you can create a calendar event and you can add, I want to add an email. Uh, yeah, you can set an email for an alarm. But for party, you know, you can't, you can query the party participants, but you can't set them, because Apple doesn't provide an API for that. On the other thing, uh, if you have a CALDAV server, you can of course just talk with our curl functions to the CALDAV server, directly. Okay. Like uh, requesting the event where you get uh, the text file, the IC ICS file, describing the event, then you can change it and upload it again, and then you have your Probably your invitation. Let's see. So, what are topics interesting for you? Uh, your uh, functions for talking with SVO database. Yeah. Uh, you said you don't need the, the special actual class uh, uh, drive. Yeah. So, well, you can still use my plugin to do ODPC with their drivers. But for something like MySQL or Postgres, that would be a waste of resources. So you can talk directly to us yes. Without any uh, drivers. Uh, well, you need the, the driver for the platform. Let, let me show you the MySQL example here. So, so I need the MySQL client library, which is just a file I can include in a container field and export on the on the client computer locally. And then I create a new SQL connection. I set the client to be MySQL and I tell the plugin where this client file is. And then the plugin can load the MySQL client library. 
and can connect to, to the server. I just specify here the normally the database name at the IP or domain name, a username and a password, and then I get a connection. So, so that would be the, the, the client library I would download from MySQL? Yeah, usually you get it with MySQL or you can find it on my website. The client library doesn't change so often, so... And even if your client library is a few years old, doesn't matter. <laughs> so uh, and uh, SQL, so you can use um, with my plugin. You can decide between my SQL uh, server, the community one, the commercial one, the embedded one, uh, your choice, and also MariaDB is no problem. Uh, you create a new command here with a with a function. And pass your SQL command, then you can execute the SQL command, and then you can walk over all the fields in the result. And for example, query the name of a field, query the value, or just query the field value by uh, by name. And you you call the fetch next function in a loop to fetch the next record. We have options to batch transfer records, so you can say the plugin should download 100 records at a time, so it doesn't need to talk over the network for each each new record, which makes it a little bit faster. We use prepared statements, so you can define statements with placeholders and can then fill them with values. And on the end, you, you free the command and free the connection. And you can, of course, have several SQL commands over one connection. It's very flexible. Yeah? The SQL database is not connected by a table occurrence? No. The plugin doesn't need table occurrences. No, but it's not also not possible to uh, fit it into a table occurrence. Um, I don't know that. Uh, because uh, the, the default way is that you uh, connect <coughs> to a uh, SA driver within your ESH. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, my plugin functions are independent of ESS, yeah. so you can do anything, but you have to write script lines for it. So let's, uh, for example, here's a SQLite example. The the code here to to do an insert is the same for MySQL, PostgreSQL, <coughs> SQLite. It's just a standard SQL, and here we we define. Um, an insert command with uh, the name of the table, the name of the fields, and then we use placeholders here, which uh, in this case use um, numbers, but we can also just name, uh, give the placeholder the name of the field, which is very convenient because then you don't mix up the indexes. And then when you fill it, you just pass uh, the ID or or in this case, the name of the placeholder, and pass all the values one by one, and this makes sure that a date stays a date and is not converted to text and uh, maybe loses meaning. Also, we can pass in containers directly to, to fill blob fields, or other way around, get containers from blob fields. Here, this example uh, goes the other way around. It makes a select on, on the SQLite databases and then reads all the fields using the, the commands get field as data type. Does your plugin read ICS files? Did they come open as a, an invitation? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, well, well, we have functions to read text files, but uh, I think an ICS file, the user would probably best double-click it to get it to the calendar. Yeah, but then it's, yeah, then it's outside the file maker. It's not yeah. inside. But it's just a text file, so. Yeah. We have functions to read text file with any text encoding or line ending. Still amazing, FileMaker can't write a simple text file beside yeah. UTF-16. So, any questions more for the... Yeah? We briefly talked about uh, Teleview and uh, some of my clients that they may be part of Teleview would like uh, some of the problems. 
Yeah, uh, depends what, what telephone system you have. Yeah. Older systems on Windows can use the Windows API called Tapey, where I have plugin functions to get a script triggered when a call is coming, and so you can query the, the caller ID and show it to the user. It's like I'm just listening to that. Yeah, but you, you can enumerate all the telephone endpoints on your computer, and then you can listen to them, to events, and then get script triggers when a call is coming in or a call is updated, so you can be notified when a call is starting, ending, or being. You can also uh, use commands to switch calls to different operator and stuff like this, uh, or automatically call someone. On uh, newer phone systems, you usually just have a web service, which you have to feed yourself with, with the curl functions. Uh, there was one on the German FileMaker form. Someone made a demo, I think, for Fritzbox. Well, if you don't have the same system, you have to yeah. buy it a new. Tapey had the advantages that it was uh, standard, supported by a lot of telephone systems. On the other side, uh, it was only for Windows. So, yeah. Could you show um, an example of what you can use SQL to make a column in the FileMaker a new field? A new field? A new field, yeah, sure. Um, SQL in FileMaker, and here's. Uh, the magic. So here is my, my field definition. Two fields. You see it? Press button. Three fields. Press button. Two fields. Now you may wonder how this works. You can set the name of the field as well directly. Yeah, sure. So, this is uh, using the execute SQL commands. And the specialty here is there is an alter table command available. Actually, normally for the OD it's described in the ODBC manual from FileMaker. And it allows you to add uh, fields to a table. And you specify a few options, which SQL allows. And so, it's limited to the options allowed. Uh, and you must run it on idle. So this means that you give the plugger the command, then you make a short pause, and while this pause, FileMaker is idle, the database is not locked, and we can actually make the change. If you try this without idle, it will, will freeze, because the plugin will try to get a lock of the database, and FileMaker has a lock, and so we are waiting each on each other to, to release the lock, doesn't work. So we can use add or remove here to add fields. And I know a few people use it because they have separated files for data and scripts. So they make more or less, they get a copy from the client, they add a, f a script to add a field, add a field for themselves, then use the new field in a layout, in scripts, whatever. And then when they go to the client, they just move the scripts file. The script file will detect the script, the field is missing, created, and then the fields are created in the same order, gets the same internal ID, and this makes it possible that the new scripts refer to the new field, which is dynamically created. Sure. This only works for well, normal fields, it doesn't work for calculated fields and other yes. things. Yeah, for for you have to, to you can only specify some options here. Like you can say here not null, not null or stuff like this. Uh, you can, and you can add an index, I think. Uh, but you are limited to what you can express in the SQL command. Uh, I think it's very useful for uh, dynamic. Uh, yeah, for importing. updating. Uh, yeah, you build files to to, to import. It's the same thing used by the plugin for the XML import. I can show you. Or, so here's the import. So let's say I need an XML file. Well, why not make one here? So I say XML, and let FileMaker wipe me a big XML file. So I got my XML file here. 
and I change the text encoding because my XML import needs UTF-8. Change the name and now I let the script run. Take a look. I got a lot of tables. And all those tables do have uh, records here for custom menus. So I can actually go and create a new layout to see them. So new, let's say computer, and what, what should we take? Maybe script steps. This could be this one. Oh, oh, oh. So I need the fields. And uh, oh, can't switch it. Is there some checkbox missing? Ah, here. Yeah. yeah, checkbox is missing. So I see all the script steps used in, in the DDL. Yeah, I just used the DDR as an XML file, but you can import any XML file this way. And I do have customers which get large, well, a collection of addresses or other data. And they don't want to want to write an XLSD to directly import in FileMaker. And this is very convenient. And it works for JSON too. Especially, and uh, it works very well if you get the data over a web service. So you dynamically get a uh, JSON or XML gen generated on the server as an answer to your request, like you request all your new orders, you get a big XML and you can import them directly. The second time, it won't make new fields, it just... Right. It just adds the missing fields. Yeah. <coughs> Does it do anything with the hierarchy in the XML? It... Yeah, uh, each record uh, has, um, each table has a field UID, for the ID and a parent UID, so you can see the hierarchy, and it has a timestamp for creation. Does it create the occurrences in the scene and does it connect it uh, with each other? <laughs> you didn't show it. So. <laughs> oh, sorry. So, uh, I, um, so let me see. I can add uh, fields here for. This is our automatically generated fields. You can actually change the names or leave them away. So we have here a new ID for all the, all the records and for the parent. And now I could uh, make a table for the other, for the parent records and could find the ID here to find the matching one. So, but building the, all those layouts for your, can be a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. And you can show your related records with portals very nice. And 